Hello and welcome to Run Testers, my name is Nick and in this video we're going to be looking at the best Nike running shoes in 2022. The plan for this video is to run through Nike's current range divided up into five categories which is daily trainers, cushion shoes, fast training shoes, racing shoes and trail shoes. There obviously is some overlap with some of those shoes that dance between categories a little bit. I've tested most of the Nike's current range but I haven't done a lot of testing on the stability shoes so there is no stability section in this video, I apologise for that. And there are some shoes I haven't been able to test, things like the Myler, but in general I have done a fair bit of testing of the Nike shoes this year so it should be a pretty comprehensive look at the shoes within those categories. So in each of the sections I'm going to run through two or three of the best current options in Nike's range and then pick out what I think is the best overall option. For each shoe I'll also quickly talk about fit and also whether there's a previous version that is better value than the newest one which there often is with some of Nike's longest running lines in particular and also in each section I'll quickly go through the best options from other brands in that category and say whether I think Nike is really producing the best shoe in that area. Uh, so yeah even though we're going to focus for the most part on what Nike offers in the video I will say if there's better options elsewhere um, that you can go and check out uh, and the other thing to say with this video is that it's gonna be me in this video running through the Nike shoes that I've tested but we do have multi-test reviews of most of these shoes on the channel which obviously give a lot more detail on the shoes because I'll be running through them fairly quickly here but also give you a couple of other opinions from other runners on the channel you know who might disagree with me slightly but yeah do check out the full reviews of each shoe if you want more details on any of them in particular um, because this is like I say going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour of the Nike range. So daily trainers, I really aim to pick out shoes that I think are the most versatile options in Nike's range. There's a lot of overlap here with cushion shoes in particular. At daily trainers, I think it's really all about versatility, so comfort, but a little bit of speed there, and a shoe that kind of has typified this for nearly 40 years is the Pegasus. So the first shoe we cover is the Nike Pegasus 39. Now, I think this is a, an improvement on the Pegasus 38 and 37, which were very comfortable cushion shoes, but the Pegasus 39 is a more versatile shoe because it's lighter. Nike rejigged the midsole, so it's not just React foam now. It has two air zoom units in as well, which which makes it a bit light, a bit firm, a bit more pop, uh, but it's still a very comfortable shoe as well. I think the strengths of the Pegasus 39 are that it is pretty versatile, it's, it's very good value, especially as it's often in sales, and has a really good outsole that's durable and grips well on both the road and the trail. So that is certainly one of the top options to consider if you're looking for a daily trainer from Nike. Pegasus has been around for a long time, and the latest version of it is a bit of a return to form if you didn't like the more cushioned shoes of recent years. On the fit front, I'd say it's true to size, uh, and in terms of whether you should look at buying an older option, you can always get older Pegasus and they are always good value. Like I said, I think the Pegasus 39 is a better all-rounder than the past couple of years because it is a bit more versatile and better for faster running. But yeah, if you're just looking for a comfortable workhorse shoe, then certainly the Pegasus 37 or 38 will be better value. Next up in this category, we have the Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. Um, now, this is a return of the Pegasus Turbo line, which was around for a couple of generations a few years back. Uh, and it's basically a lighter, speedier, more exciting version of the Pegasus. Now, in the past, it used fresh Zoomex foam mixed with React foam. The Pegasus Turbo Next Nature uses recycled Zoomex foam, which is a little bit kind of heavier and firmer than fresh Zoomex, the stuff you'll see on shoes like the Vaporfly and Alphafly. And it mixes that recycled foam with an SRO2 carrier foam, which is an EVA foam that basically stabilizes the slightly softer Zoomex foam in the midsole of the Turbo Nature. It is still a slightly bouncier, more energetic ride than you get from the standard Pegasus 39. And I'd say the Turbo Nature is a better shoe for those who want an all-rounder that's it leans more towards speed work it's a faster shoe than the pegasus 39 but hasn't got as good an outsole as the pegasus 39 and it's maybe not as comfortable for cruising through very long runs uh, as the pegasus 39 but but it is a pretty good all-rounder shoe in general like it's not had the best reception since it's been launched because it, a lot of people prefer the feeling of the original Pegasus Turbo which was a bit softer and bouncier but the Pegasus Turbo Nature is still a fun shoe to run in I found and it does have a firmer ride but it does soften up a bit with use and it is a versatile shoe that can handle a good variety of runs. Fit wise it came up a bit long for me so I was happiest half a size down uh, but I have a narrow foot so I was happy to go half a size down so it's something to judge there on width versus length and the last shoe in this daily training category I've gone for is the Nike Zoom Fly 5. Now this in the past would have been in the fast training category it is a plated training shoe uh, and it looks like it's gonna be a fast shoe it's got zoom x written on the side and that kind of thing but really this version of the zoom fly is very much a daily trainer it's a, almost more of a cushion shoe if anything it's not that good at fast speeds at all but it is a pretty solid option for just cruising through daily runs it's fairly comfortable it's got a reasonably smooth ride and it does quite well for long runs but 
yeah, it doesn't really have much top-end performance, and that's partly because it's so heavy. And one of the reasons it's so heavy is, again, it uses recycled ZoomX rather than fresh ZoomX and pairs it with a carrier foam, but there's a, a lot of foam in the midsole here, and it's not a very lightweight foam. The outsole is also pretty good, which adds a bit more weight, but obviously will help with durability and grip. In general, this wasn't a shoe that really impressed me that much, but it is another daily training option from, like, you want maybe a max cushion shoe with a plate in it, that plate, I'm going to say, isn't going to deliver much in terms of propulsion and performance. I still think the Turbo Nature is a faster shoe for sure than the uh, Zoomfly 5, and I probably enjoyed running quicker even into the Pegasus 39. But yeah, this is another option in this category. Not the best out there, and it's certainly not a shoe I would look at as a cheaper version of Nike's carbon plated racing shoes. This is very much, I think, a daily training shoe now rather than a speedy shoe. I'd say the shoe fits true to size. I've used a half size down and that was okay as well, but it was a bit tight on my toes. And in terms of looking at previous versions, like this is a, I think a more comfortable and slightly better shoe than the Zoom Fly 4, even though it is getting a bit heavier still. Um, I'd say neither are all that outstanding. You could possibly look for a deal on the Zoom Fly 4 instead, but the Zoom Fly 5 is a fairly is quite a different shoe because they replaced the midsole material with the, the recycled Zoom X and changed the configuration of the shoe a little bit. But yeah, in terms of actual performance, there's not that much of an upgrade. So top picks for Daily Trainer. Um, I personally really enjoy the ride of the Pegasus Turbo Nature, but I think the Pegasus 39 probably makes the most sense to pick as a shoe because it's better value. It's got a really good outsole that will last a bit longer than the one on the Pegasus Turbo. If you are looking for that Daily Trainer, it's going to grind out a lot of miles. It's pretty versatile. Then the Pegasus 39 will do the job uh, as it has done for you know a long time for many runs. Is, yeah, I think it's probably just about the standout option from Nike in this category. And then if we're talking about other brands, this is an area I think that Nike just doesn't really excel at all. I think there's a lot of brands that make more versatile, enjoyable daily trainers than Nike. Some really great options off the top of my head, things like the Hoka Mac 5, the Socony Endorphin Speed 3. Um, they're both very speedy all round the shoes that lean more towards kind of pace rather than cushioning. But something like the Asics Nova Blast 3 is a very fun, bouncy daily trainer that is great for long stuff and comfort and you know and easy stuff but does still have the pace for fast stuff as well and then puma's range is a couple of good options in this area as well and the velocity nitro 2 a nice simple but you know effective and good value daily trainer and then there's a deviate nitro 2 which has a plate in it that helps a bit with the speed work but it's still a comfortable option for um, daily training as well so i think this is area definitely where i would be probably looking at other brands over nike but if you're sticking within the nike range can't go too wrong with the pegasus 39 but even if i do slightly prefer the ride of the turbo nature <laughs> Moving on to cushion shoes, I've got two shoes in this category, and like I said, there's a bit of overlap with daily trainers. The Pegasus is quite a cushion shoe, and both the Invincible and the Infinity are reasonable daily trainers if you're looking at for more cushioning uh, than speed. But yeah, they are principally cushion shoes, and that's how we've classified them here. Miles will start off with the Nike Invincible 2, which is one of the most distinctive shoes on the market. It's got that big, thick Zoom X midsole, which creates a very soft and springy ride. It's not exactly a stable shoe, but it is not unstable. Nike's made it broad and put in a heel clip to try and create some stability there with that soft midsole. It creates a very bouncy and fun ride for your easy runs, and it's not completely lacking in versatility either. You can get a bit of spring out of the Invincible if you're moving at kind of steady or tempo paces as well. It's a very fun shoe. Um, it's a little bit expensive. I think it's one of the more unique shoes Nike makes um, and it's yeah, great fun to run in. For me, it fits true to size, uh, maybe a slightly roomy feel at the front, but nothing that was in any way a problem on the run. This is one where I'd definitely be looking at getting the previous version if you can. The Invincible 2 came out this year. If you can find the Invincible 1 in the sale, it's a very similar feeling across the board. I would try and get the first version and save yourself a bit of money. Moving on to the Infinity Run 3, uh, this is a far firmer, more stable cushioned option in Nike's range, a stable neutral shoe. It's got a React foam midsole with a rocker, so it's a firm but not harsh in any way ride with a rocker that kind of gently rolls you along. This is a really durable workhorse of a shoe that's great for just racking up lots and lots of long runs, easy runs. It can do a bit of kind of tempo and steady and you know faster paces, but it's not really where the Infinity excels. It, it's very much a shoe that you can just pull on and use and use and use and it's stable protects the body it's not the most exciting ride it's quite a dull ride in fact but it is reliable and really does you know get the job done for a lot of miles which obviously adds to its value on the value front i would definitely try and get an older version of this shoe as well the infinity line really hasn't changed too much in the three generations so far the uppers have changed a fair bit but i think between the two and the three in particular you might as well just get the two if you can in the sale it's a very similar experience all round and on the fit this was true to size for me I'd say both of these are really quite good shoes in their different ways. I think the Invincible is the much more exciting and impressive shoe uh, within Nike's range. Um, it doesn't always work for me. There are times when I'm on very heavy legs, I'm a bit tired, and actually maybe I'd prefer the stability of the Infinity, but if you're looking 
just at the best cushion shoe in Nike's range. I think it is the Invincible. It's a very interesting and fun shoe to use for me. I think it's a standout pick from Nike. And it helps, actually, the Infinity is very different to it. So if you don't like that squishy, mushy, unstable feel of the Invincible, or if you find that it doesn't give you the bounce you want, then the firmer, more reliable feel of the Infinity you know, will serve you very well, in most likely. There probably is a good cushion shoe for you within these two, because they do catered to different tastes quite clearly. And then looking around the market, I think these two shoes do actually stand up pretty well with the market at large. I think Nike's cushion shoes are quite good. There are very good options out there, obviously from other brands. I think like the Brooks Glycerin 20, the Saucony Triumph 20 are two outstanding cushion shoes that have a fairly traditional feel, but they've got some kind of modern touches in terms of the foams used in the midsole to create like lively rides that are still very comfortable and protective and pretty stable and great for beginners, experienced runners, everyone. So those are two really good options. Uh, then there's also things like the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 for a cheaper cushioned option although it's not quite as max stack or something like the On Cloud Monster who for people who want a firmer ride from a you know a well cushioned shoe Cloud Monster is a really good daily trainer that's also quite cushioned um, because it is that little bit firmer and you know adds a bit more punch to your runs you can use it for a variety of runs but it is still comfortable to use for lots of long easy runs as well and then the last shoe I mentioned is the Saucony Tempest which is a really fantastic stability shoe that feels just like a normal cushion shoe with a fun and fairly soft and bouncy ride that is still very stable so that does I think create a really interesting option on the market in that you don't have to have any concerns about stability or have enjoying quite a lively soft and springy ride but next up we've got nike's fast training shoes um, and i've got two shoes in this category the tempo next percent which is an older shoe but very much a fast training shoe and then i've put the nike streak fly in here as well although that is pitched more as a racing shoe for 5k and 10k i think it's not really anywhere near as good as nike's proper racing shoes which we'll come on to so i think it's probably best used as a short speed work shoe where it really is quite a lot of fun. So we'll start with the Tempo Next Percent. This has been around for a little while. It's a pretty strange shoe. It's got a big mix of foams and technology in the midsole. You've got a React foam at the heel. You've got some Zoom X foam at the front along with Nike's Air Zoom pods. And you've got a plate that is a composite plate that runs along the half of the shoe. So there's a whole load of tech in there and it creates quite an unwieldy and not particularly attractive and slightly weird feeling shoe underfoot, but it's undeniably fast. And um, I do think the Tempo Next Percent goes a little bit underrated. It is overpriced, I'd say for sure, especially just think the price has gone up since we first covered it. But I really did find it very fast when I used it for training sessions. It's not the lightest shoe in the world, but it stands up very well to lighter, fast training shoes out there on the market at large. But it's not the most enjoyable shoe to use for easy runs. It's quite an intrusive ride at times because it does feel a bit odd underfoot compared to lots of other shoes out there. But yeah, if you're looking for a fast training shoe that probably pairs quite well with the Alpha Fly in particular, then the Tempo Next Percent will do a job. Uh, and then if you're looking at the Nike Street Fly, this is a stripped back, incredibly lightweight shoe, you know, well under 200 grams. It's, it's got a Zoom X foam midsole, really soft, lovely, bouncy feeling on the foot, but it's only got a small P-back shank in the midfoot of the shoe. There's no full length plate or anything like that. So that means the ride is much more softer and flexible and feels quite natural underfoot. But it does mean that you lose a little bit of the kind of propulsion and control of that foam that you get from the full plated shoes like the Vaporfly and Alpha Fly. Now, Street Fly, I think, is fine. Like, I've done lots of speed work in it. I've raced a five miler in it. I don't think it's as good a racing shoe as things like the Vaporfly and Alpha Fly, even though it's a lot lighter, just because the extra punch you get from the plate really worked well with the Zoom X phone to create a faster, more efficient ride. But for tearing it up at a track session or generally just doing fast training runs where you're not absolutely you know, desperate to hit a certain pace, you just want to enjoy them. It's super light, it's really fun, it's a really good shoe, and it's pretty good value at its price. Don't think the durability is that terrible, even though it doesn't look like it's going to stand up to loads and loads of miles. It stood up pretty well during my testing. So that's quite a fun option to have uh, as a fast training shoe. Probably a fairly niche one. I don't think I'll be using it for lots of long, hard tempo runs and that kind of thing, or longer speed work sessions I do during marathon training where you're doing like 3K or 5K reps, that kind of thing. That's maybe where the Tempo Next Percent would be better, but the Street Fly is a lot of fun. And a quick note on fit, I found that the Tempo Next Percent fit me true to size, whereas the Street Fly I found was a little bit kind of big and long in the forefoot for me. Again, I've got a bit of a narrow foot, so I would go half a size down if I was buying the Street Fly again. A top pick is quite hard in this category. I think they serve quite different needs. Tempo Next Percent is probably a more traditional fast training shoe in terms of the job it does, if not the ride and the look of it. But yeah, neither I think are really that great. I'd certainly be looking at other brands if you're looking at fast training shoes. The Saucony Endorphin Speed is the obvious choice here. It is the best fast training shoe on the market. I think it's actually the best all-rounder shoe on the market still. But So that's one great option to look for. 
The Puma Deviate Nitro 2 is another really good fast training shoe with a plate in it that also works as a daily trainer. The Hoka Mac 5, nice lightweight shoe without a plate if you want that, uh, which does a great job of covering your fast training runs. And then if you're looking, in, certainly in comparison to the Street Fly in particular, the Adidas Takumi Scent 8 is a better kind of lower stack you know, racing shoe slash speed work shoe. The Takumi said, I think is actually a fantastic racing shoe for short events, whilst also being about the most enjoyable track session shoe I've ever come across. So yeah, Takumi Sen, if you go looking at Street Fly, I think it's a better option. If you're looking at the Tempo Next Percent, I'd be picking up the Endorphin Speed for sure. All right, racing shoes. Uh, Nike really changed the game when it comes to racing shoes and it's still got three outstanding options in its range now. The two newer ones, obviously the Nike Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 and the Nike Alphafly Next% Percent 2, but we'll also talk about the original Alphafly since it's still widely available. So the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, don't need to say too much about it. I guess it's got the Zoom X midsole with a full length carbon plate. Otherwise, it's pretty stripped back, lightweight, perfect racing shoe for pretty much any distance. I've got my 5K PB in it. My recent marathon PB was in this shoe as well. It does cover the entire range of races, and it's a great training shoe, and it's often now in sales for a lot less than its RRP, which has seemed to have gone up a little bit recently for me. Like There used to be always be versions available for £210, but now even the cheapest version is 225 But like I say, shop around. You can usually get the Vaporfly in a deal somewhere. Now, the Alpha Fly 2 is less of a slam dunk of a shoe, even though it just did set the world marathon record with you know on the feet of Elliot Kipchoge. It's got the air zoom pods in the forefoot. It's still got a big stack of Zoom X foam as well, but it's a much bigger, heftier, chunkier shoe than the Vaporfly. Uh, it really pushes things to the limit in terms of super shoe technology, and it is a fair bit heavier as a result, but it does have a very fast ride. I've done 5 mile and 10k races in the Alpha Fly 2, and I think I've got my 5 mile PB in it. It's really quick. It's definitely a very quick shoe. Um, it's just a bit more of a unusual shoe compared to the Vaporfly. You know, it was unusual when it came out, but now it feels very normal almost for a super shoe. It's a very aggressive, tippy forward feeling, a little bit of bounce. The Alphafly is much more bouncy and softer and a bit more unnatural in the way it feels on the foot, the two in particular. And it's also, you know, insanely expensive. It's a hard shoe to recommend because of the price tag, especially as we'll come on to the Alphafly 1 is still available now and it's often in sales for a lot less than the Alphafly 2. Now, the Alphafly 1 is a lighter shoe than the 2. Uh, it's got a slightly kind of narrower pinched feel um, and it's a little bit less stable. So people with the Alphafly 1 often found that they found the arch would dig into their foot or they found it too unstable, that kind of thing. The Alphafly 2 fix those issues to a certain extent. There's still a little bit of a pinch point under the arch, but it's a more comfortable shoe all round. It's got a higher drop too at eight millimeters versus four millimeters. So maybe if the Alphafly 1 didn't work for you, the Alphafly 2 might, but I think in general, uh, I would try and get a deal on the Alphafly 1 if I was looking at the Alphafly 2, uh, because you can get it for maybe 100, 150 pounds less even. Overall, the safest top pick in this category is certainly the Vaporfly because it's just been so reliable for so many runners for so many years and it's not as comfortable as the Alpha Fly, especially over those long distance events like the marathon but it is still very comfortable it will still work over a full marathon obviously it's also cheaper on rrp and then generally in sales as well so Vaporfly is probably the easiest pick if you're coming to this fresh personally i think of the three, I like the Alpha Fly one the most for the marathon, but it's something I'm constantly questioning, you know, in the lead up to a marathon, I'm often having to pick between these three shoes. And it's, you know, it's a bit of a wash all round. It might come down to personal preference. So that's why I think the Vaporfly is the easiest shoe to recommend of them. And then across the board with these three shoes, they have fit me perfectly well, true to size. Uh, I've never had any kind of problems with it. And I have tried half size down in the Alpha Fly and it was a bit too tight. So yeah, I would recommend going true to size in all three of these shoes. In terms of what else is on the market, Nike is the standard setter in this area and there's you know other brands have made fantastic carbon racing shoes but I do, I do think the Nike shoes are the best out there if you're looking elsewhere the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is a fantastic shoe really good for every event from 5k up to the marathon the Adios Pro 3 is a really strong marathon racing shoe and the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus is a very good versatile carbon racing shoe as well a bit similar to the Vaporfly again in that I think it's very good for all distances from 5k to the marathon <laughs> Coming on to trail shoes to round off the video, uh, we'll start with the Nike Pegasus Trail 4. This is a road to trail shoe, so it's not got the most aggressive outsole in the world, but it does work very well you know, on both road and trail because it's got the React Foam midsole that you find on you know, the road version of the Pegasus as well, which does create a very comfortable ride. And the outsole just give it that little bit extra grip so you can head onto light trails in particular with no real worries about coming unstuck. It's not gonna handle very technical trails very well. It's not that great in the mud, but for the vast majority of trail running, especially in the summer, the 
Pegasus Trail does the job perfectly well. It's great for, you know, if you're in a city and you try and get into parks as much as possible onto canal towpaths, that kind of thing. It, it handles that kind of terrain really well. Uh, the Pegasus Trail 4 fits me true to size, which is a bit unusual for a Nike trail shoe. And compared to previous versions, I do think the Pegasus Trail 4 is a bit better in terms of grip than the Pegasus Trail 3. So I think it is the version of shoe that I would recommend going for. You know, it's not a massive upgrade in terms of grip. So if you do find a very good deal on the Pegasus Trail 3, you could go for that one. Then we've got the Nike Zoom X Zagama, which is a new trail shoe from Nike. And like the name suggests, it's got Zoom X foam in the midsole, which is very exciting. A big high stack of Zoom X. It is combined with Nike's SR02 carrier foam to make sure that that Zoom X foam isn't unstable on the trail. So it's, it's not the soft you know, lively feeling you might expect if you've used the Nike Invincible Road shoe, for example. The Zagama feels fairly firm. It's not the most exciting ride, in fact, in the world. And it's, it's reasonably smooth. It's got a decent heel-to-toe transition, but not an amazing one. And um, I tested it, uh, hoping for something a bit more exciting and lively underfoot, and it, it doesn't really deliver that. It's a pretty comfortable shoe, that's for sure. And if you're particularly looking at long runs on the trails, the Zagama is a decent option for that. But it does have not the best outsole. Uh, all of Nike's trail shoes have basically a bit of a problem with outsoles in wet conditions, basically on things like you know, wet rocks, wet roots, that kind of thing. You know, that's the hardest place to grip for any trail shoe, but Nike shoes can just slip right off them, and the Zagama's no different on that front. So it's got a more aggressive outsole than you'll find on the Pegasus trail shoe, but it's not got the kind of sticky grip that you get from uh, trail shoes from uh, brands like Hoka and Innovate and that kind of thing it's not a fantastic gripping shoe and that's the same actually of the nike terra kaiga 8 the last shoe in this category this is feels like it wants to be a very stripped back aggressive trail shoe with a good outsole and otherwise a you know very lightweight build but it's actually quite heavy uh, and the grip isn't very good and the ride is quite firm and I don't know, it's not a shoe I recommend, but I, I couldn't really work out what it's for. Like every trail I've done in it, I just, it's just, this is not very comfortable, but it's not very fast uh, and it doesn't grip very well. So I don't really see what it is bringing to the table. Of these three shoes, it's the worst because like, the Pegasus Trail 4 has got slightly worse grip than the Terra Kaiga, but it's, you know, the Terra Kaiga still doesn't grip well in the wet at all. So I would get the Trail 4 because it's a much more comfortable shoe and actually a lighter shoe. And then the Zagama is certainly more comfortable for looking at long runs on the trails and it's got a pretty similar level of grip to the Terra Kaiga. So in terms of fit, the Zagama kept big for me. I'm half a size down and it's still got loads of room in the tie box. So I would I would suggest going half a size down in that shoe for sure. Actually, that's the same with the Terra Kaiga 8. It's got a very big fit as well. Like you find that quite often with trail shoes, they want to give you room in the tie box to make sure your toes aren't jamming into the front of the shoe if your feet expand over long runs or if you're running down hills. But as someone who's you know on the smaller side of my true to size, uh, I find it's best to go half a size down in most of the trail shoe range uh, as a result of that. So top pick here is actually pretty hard, obviously, because with trail shoes, it depends on your use. If you are an ultra marathon runner, for example, the Zagama is the obvious pick in Nike's range. But I actually think in terms of within their categories, how they compare to other brands, the, the Pegasus Trail 4 is a really good road to trail shoe, I'd say. Because if you are looking at road to trail shoe, you're not, probably not looking at very slick very wet, tricky conditions that often in it. So it does do its job quite well. Whereas I think the other two, the Zagama and Terracaiga are more clearly outperformed by shoes from other brands. So I think the Pegasus Trail 4 is probably the outstanding trail shoe for me in Nike's range, but, but it really does depend on your use scenario. And then yeah, coming on to other brands, I just don't think Nike are an exceptional trail running shoe brand. And a lot of that is down to the outsoles, which aren't really up to snuff when you compare to what you get from other brands. I think you can look at a lot of shoes in ranges from people like Hoka, Salomon, Innovate, uh, Socony's Peregrine range, and you're going to find better options. For the Zagama, I'd certainly be looking at the Hoka Speedgoat 5 instead, for example. And on the road to trail front, I think the Innovate Parklaw is a fantastic road to trail shoe that's got better grip than the Pegasus while still being very comfortable. And Terra Kaiga, oh yeah, I'd get a load of different shoes ahead of that. <laughs> the Socony Peregrine is a really nice all-rounder trail shoe that can handle a really varied range of terrain while still being fairly lightweight and fairly comfortable so yeah lots of good trail shoes out there from other brands nike's got some okay options here but it's not the area where they really excel that's it guys that is my quick run through of the nike running shoe range 2022 uh if you have any questions about shoes i have covered here or haven't covered uh please let me know in the comments below and i'll try and get to them if i haven't covered a shoe here the odds are that i just simply haven't tested it i've tried to get out as much knowledge as i have on nike's range here and i don't think i've kept anything back so <laughs> just in case you can ask a question and i'll try and get to it please do like and subscribe ring the little bell and yeah we'll see you next time on the channel